Hello, and welcome back to Crit and Crit. I'm Sent. I'm Axion. And we are continuing our journey through Terry Pratchett's pyramids while we explore the depths of La Mulana. That was not what I wanted to do. Aren't you glad you got the ice cape? Yes, that's why I got the ice cape. <laughs> anyway, um, seems kind of apropos that you do nothing but fight in La Mulana because, well, what we're talking about today is fighting. Which comes up surprisingly often in a number of Discworlds. Like, um, yeah, there's um, the men ones we're talking about today of a, a Fiend and a Sort, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, then you've also got Jingo, which I don't know if we'll get to one day, because, well, it's kind of similar in the... Uh, well, I'll get to it later why it's similar, but it is. I believe that's a one-way door from the other side. Yeah, there's a certain wall I, I need to break before I can move forward. I don't remember precisely where it is, but it's in this area. I also need to get this. But yeah. Anyway, um, what we are looking at is a tendency of countries to just look for any excuse to have a good fight. Because, well, war. Who is it good for? whoever wins, because you can impose all sorts of sanctions and usually get some sort of monetary or geographical gain out of it. Also, it strengthens the economy. I'm not gonna quote Eisenhower, but I'm going to think it very hard. Oh, I was quoting Sam and Max. I know. I know. Here it is. There's you all. At any rate, oh boy, block puzzles. They're a blast. Oh. Is this one of the ones where you can uh, permanently screw yourself out of the item? No, because you can always reload the map. Okay. I know there's a few items that, like, uh, will do that. Anyway, uh, as we mentioned, a good excuse for a war. This basically sums up the countries of uh, a Fiven sort who border Jelly Baby on either side. Which is kind of funny, considering that Jelly Baby is said to have, you know, a... It's 50... it's like, was it 50 miles down and 2 miles across? Something like that, yeah. It's very long, but it's very thin. Yeah, because they have to keep uh, selling the land to pay for the pyramids that are everywhere. To these two countries. <laughs> yep. So, the, f the only thing keeping them from destroying each other is the fact that there is a two-mile stretch of neutral territory that they can't use to kill each other over. Which means whenever they have to have like any peace negotiations, they have to go to Jelly Baby for neutral ground peace talks. Whoop. I think I missed a step. I don't remember how to do this one. But yeah, you've got to be able to get that one block down there to drop the other block, the top, the top block on the right. And it's honestly one of Te uh, Tepic's first duties after becoming king is to, well, sit there while Dios actually gives them the advice. I did it too soon. Is 
So you end up with these two countries who are constantly at each other's throats, save for the fact that there is this tiny bit of land between them that's not under either of their control. And that tiny bit of land has been selling itself off to either side for generations. Ah. I get dealing with the bombs, and then it distracts me from dealing with the puzzle. And Dios has a, his own take on the situation. Uh, Swartz is a desert culture like us. We, we helped to shape it over the years. As for Phoebe, they have some very strange beliefs. How do you mean? They believe the world is run by geometry, sire, all lines and angles and numbers. That can lead to some very unsound ideas, which, you know, is kind of foreshadowing everything that goes wonky with the pyramid. But then, uh, so they are a desert culture. I'm afraid they don't take pyramids seriously, sire. So whose side are we really on? Our own, sire. There is always a way. So, we are truly neutral ground. We are just basically here to stop them from fighting each other and get whatever we can out of the deal in the, in, in the process. Which, as of late, has mostly been money to build more pyramids. Or the resources, I think, is more accurate. Okay, now I think I got it. And it doesn't... Ah, I see what the problem is. Remember when I said La Mulana is super precise? Those of you who aren't familiar with it, this is what I meant. What was the game you were watching a video about that they found a brand new glitch in it because of La Mulana speedrunner was playing it? That was Castlevania Circle of the Moon, the game that we just finished playing uh, in our last book. Yeah, just we were not surprised to hear that a La Mulana speedrunner found it because if you aren't playing with a walkthrough, you literally have to try flipping everything to figure out some of these puzzles because Esoteric does not begin to cover it. So, we see early in the book that both of these countries have a vested interest in keeping Jelly Baby happy in the hopes that it might give them some kind of political or military advantage in their constant conflicts. And at the same time, it's clear that all of them are not particularly caring about Jelly Baby's well-being on its own as there's little concern from the authorities of Ifibi or Sort when Jelly Baby vanishes halfway through the story. Instead, their immediate response is, oh, we're going to war now because the tiny little buffer state between our domains is now gone. We are now directly bordering the country we have been in conflict with, and that means we need to go to war. Yep, and Tepic is kind of hesitant to say more on the subject than he already does because, well, as he puts it, Tepic had described the vanishing of the kingdom, but hadn't revealed his position in it. He hadn't had a lot of experience in these matters, but he had a very clear feeling that kings who hadn't got a kingdom anymore were not likely to be very popular in neighboring countries. There had been one or two like that in Ekmar Pork, deposed royalty who had fled their suddenly dangerous kingdoms for, for Inks, hospitable bosom carrying nothing but the clothes they stood up in and a few wagon loads of jewels. The city, of course, welcomed anyone, regardless of race, color, class, or creed, who had spending money in incredible amounts, but nevertheless, the inhumation of surplus monarchs was a regular source of work for the Assassin's Guild. Uh, 
but yep. There's nothing between us. The, oh dear, that means we shall, be, we shall be forced to make war. Why? Why does it mean we'll be forced to make? Why does it mean we'll be forced to make war? Historical imperative. So basically, tradition. Tradition. Tevya intensified. I should probably get this chest while I'm thinking about it. So, not only is Jelly Baby run by the force of tradition for tradition's sake, so are its neighboring countries, even as they do try to be a little bit more with the times regarding other things, like, you know, acknowledging math. And philosophy. But yeah, uh, war, because we've always been at war, isn't really a great look. Unless, of course, you're the people who simply benefit from it and never actually have to do the fighting yourself. Which is, you know, same as it ever was, every country, every age. And I'm going to have to redo that fight now. Whoop. Or just continue Definitely from Definitely going to have to redo it. <laughs> I mean, that'll get my shurikens back, at least. Yeah. So, yeah. The Great War between Ifeev and Sort, who haven't really actually had any reason to go to war other than because we said so who, um, Tepic doesn't really get to have much say in either way, because when they were supposed to meet with him, um, Dios had already met with them. And, well, they're just meeting with you out of tradition, sire. You don't actually make the decisions here. But I'm the king, yes. It wouldn't do to sully the throne with matters of state. Which sounds super weird to us, but from what I understand, is not too un too inaccurate to the way certain things did work historically. Like, obviously not all countries treated their monarchy this way, but at least in some places it was known that the king was just a figurehead representative of the divine and that the actual leadership of the country was the various bureaucrats and nobles and power brokers within the uh, within the ongoing systems of what it took to actually keep the country running. But it does also kind of bleed into, like, consider, like, current politics, where, you know, you most people can only name, like, the head of state with any reliability. Even though, in most countries, there's some form of a parliamentary or congressional system in place, which means the head of state can't actually just do whatever policies they want to have happen. So, yeah, the power behind the throne is more powerful than the throne. This doesn't seem to be your day. It's not, but that guy's really annoying. I'm gonna try a different tactic next time I face him. Try flares. Except flares have to be below him and uh, not hit any of the platforms. Okay. Buy more shuriken? I think the shurikens aren't dealing damage fast enough.
But yeah, it's clear, even as the story unfolds, that the average people in these two countries don't really have anything against each other, and we see this pretty clearly in the scene at the end, when the two countries have sent their soldiers out. They're quite friendly with one another, very civil, and uh, everyone seems to be very happy when Jelly Baby randomly reappears. And they don't have to go to war, and they can all go home. Which, can you blame them? <laughs> but, yeah. And we can tell at the end that things are going to change as Tracy takes the throne. Somewhat reluctantly. But, yeah, kind of feel like talking in circles on this one. It was kind of an interesting footnote to note, but don't really have a whole lot to say on it. Yep, it's a short one, but that's okay. We will see y'all next time as I try to take care of Hecatonic Eris again. See you then.